I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make shortbread tarts with cream filling and this is what they look like. They're made in miniature. The shortbread has this wonderfully buttery flavor and they're tender crisp and then we're going to fill them with a no-bake cheesecake filling. Really good on their own but I like to put some berries on top. Kind of looks good, tastes good. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to make our no-bake cheesecake filling. Now I'm going to make it in uh, my food processor. If you have a stand mixer you can use that with your paddle attachment or you could even use a hand mixer for this. The first thing you will need is 8 ounces which is 227 grams of cream cheese. Now you want the regular or the full fat cream cheese for this and have it at room temperature. Put that here and then I'm going to process it or if you're using like a mixer just uh, beat it until it's nice and smooth. We want to get rid of uh, all the lumps. You may have to scrape down your food processor or your bowl a few times because it's kind of sticky. Okay, that's good. Quick stir, get the bottom, it tends to stick. Okay. okay, so now the next thing we're going to add is one 14 ounce can, which is 396 grams of sweetened condensed milk. And just pour that in there. Now, sweetened condensed milk is a mixture of whole milk and sugar and it's cooked until about probably 60% of the water evaporated. So as you can see, it's very thick, it's sticky, and it's wonderfully sweet. It's like a concentrated sugar syrup. Okay, and then we're going to add some lemon juice and lemon zest. So you will need uh, one tablespoon, which is, if you weigh it, about five grams. If you're putting it into a tablespoon, kind of pat it down because it's very light and fluffy. So, And we need a third of a cup, which is 80 milliliters, 80 grams of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now, um, so that would be about, I'm going to say, roughly two of this size lemons. So when you're buying lemons, make sure you want them nice, bright yellow like this, no soft spots. And it's best, like kind of if you pick it up, they're heavy for their size. That way you know there's lots of juice in them. If you can buy organic, you want to make sure you wash your lemons really well. Actually, I use soap and water and then rinse them. And then first we're going to take uh, the outer skin, the yellow rind or zest. I'm using a microplane. If you have a box grater, you can just use the fine side of that. If you're using the microplane, it's kind of easy. You just go around. And then you want to make sure you just get the, the yellow part, not the, the white underneath, because that's kind of bitter. And we're using the zest because there is a lot of flavor in that. And then once you get your one tablespoon, which I'm going to roughly say it's the two lemons is what I used. Then what I do is I tend to like just press down and that kind of releases the juices and then just cut it in half. And then if you have a, you can just kind of squeeze them like this or if you have a juicer. And then what I do is I take my measuring cup and I put a little strainer and strain my juice through that to get rid of all the seeds. Don't want that. <laughs> So we're just going to put our zest, as you can see, pretty easy, just dump and process. And then our third of a cup, 80 milliliters of our lemon juice. And then I'm going to add also one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract. I like the vanilla flavor with the lemon and the cream cheese and just everything. If you don't want a uh, vanilla flavor, just leave that out. Now I'm just going to process this just until it's nice and smooth. Don't get carried away because the more you process, the thinner it will get and we want it to be thick. So, but you may have to stop a few times because it's kind of sticky. 
Okay, I think that's good. Yeah. Just want to make sure it's nice and smooth and everything's all mixed together. So now, you may wonder why I started with the filling instead of the shortbread, and it's because this really needs to chill for a while to firm up. It's never going to be like, like, like a real cheesecake filling where you can cut it. That's why we, we've made it into little tarts. But, you know, it's a little thin right now. So ideally, I make this at least the day before I'm going to, um, you know, make my shortbread and, and fill the tarts. But actually, you can make this up to like a week in advance. So it's kind of one of those things, great do ahead. But, you know, sometimes if you're really, you forget, you probably want it to a minimum of like eight hours in the fridge. But... I really recommend making it at least the day before. And it's not that hard to make. So, so that's it. I'm going to cover that. I'm going to put it into the refrigerator. And then when we come back, we will make our shortbread. So now for our shortbread batter. If you're using a stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment. Or you could use a ham mixer. Or really, because shortbread, we're not going to beat a lot of air into the batter. It's really just a matter of mixing everything together. So you could just uh, do it by hand with a wooden spoon. The first thing you will need is one and a half cups, which is 340 grams of butter, and have your butter at room temperature. I'm using unsalted butter. I prefer the flavor, and I, that way I can regulate the salt in my recipe. But, like, especially for shortbread, if you have a favorite salted butter that you want to use, by all means use that. And then you can just leave out the salt in the recipe. I'll just put that in there. And then I'm going to just beat this on medium speed just until it's nice and smooth. Okay. Good. And as always, you know, scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl periodically. You want to make sure everything gets mixed together. And our next, let's scrape that off. Our next thing is three quarters of a cup, which is 90 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing sugar. Now some would say, can I use granulated white sugar? Yes, you could. You could use an equal amount. So that would be like about a half a cup, which is about 100 grams of the granulated white. And then I like to add a little vanilla to my uh, shortbread. If you don't want the vanilla flavor, then just leave it out. So I'm adding one and a half teaspoons, six grams. And now I'm just going to beat this on medium speed just until everything gets mixed together. So that's all mixed together. So now for our dry ingredients, I have two and a quarter cups, which is 295 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. Now I'm going to add to that a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. Now if you use salted butter, I would just leave out that salt. And uh, I'm also adding a third of a cup which is 45 grams of cornstarch. If you don't have cornstarch, you could also use a rice flour for this. And the reason I'm using this is it kind of makes our shortbread really tender. Very good. Now, if you didn't have it or you didn't want to use that, you could just add, instead of the uh, cornstarch, just replace that with more flour. So. If you've never tried it, try it because it just makes your shortbread so good. So now I'm just going to mix this together. Do it slowly at first. You don't want that flour coming up in your face. Okay, and we're done. As you can see, you could make this by hand because really it's just about mixing all your ingredients together. So 
Now this is a lot of shortbread, but we are going to make 48 of the miniature. So need a lot of shortbread for that. And what's nice is the shortbread, can, it, you can freeze it. So if you're going to do this, I figure why not do a lot? And plus your filling, you, you, we made a lot of filling. So great for parties. These are so good. Okay. I'll scrape that later. <laughs> so you don't have to watch me do that. So now, now, like I said, this will make 40 inch miniature uh, shortbread tarts. By miniature, these ones are about two inches in diameter. It's about five centimeters. You know, your pan may look a little different than mine. Now, this comes in a 24. I only have one pan. So I'm gonna have to make 24, bake them off, and then make another 24. So if you have two pans and you're lucky, you can do them all at once. So I do, now if you have a non-stick pan, perfect. It is so much easier. But either way, um, I still like to either butter, so you can melt a little butter and then just use a pastry brush and then brush the inside, or I'm gonna do, make it easy. I'm just gonna use one of these non-stick sprays, just a light spray. And then, what I like to do, because you know, you get some of the spray on the top of the pan and it can kind of bake on there. So what I do is just take a towel or a clean cloth and just wipe that off like so. Now for um, this size, you're going to need, now my, oh, first, my batter is pretty stiff. If yours was really soft, you know, maybe your butter or the, your kitchen is really warm, then you can just pop this into the uh, refrigerator and let it firm up. Actually, if you wanted to make the, the batter and then even chill it overnight, you could do that. But mine's okay. So you will need about a scant tablespoon. If you have a scale, that's even better. You will need 15 grams for each one. So, so much. Okay, and then what I do, I'll just show you one, a couple. I just kind of roll it into a ball, put it into the center like that. You may have a different method. This is mine. I've, <laughs> I like to do it this way. So then I kind of press it down and then I just take my finger and then just kind of put it up the sides. Press it down the bottom. Simple enough. And then you just carry on with the rest. Okay, so our last one. Press it down. So I'm going to show you, this is about the texture of the shortbread you want. That makes it easy to kind of push it up the sides. If it's, you know, softer than this, you might want to put it into the refrigerator to chill for just a little. So now what I'm going to do is put the whole pan into the freezer. That way the shortbread will chill and that will help um, prevent it from puffing up during baking. So that's what I'm going to do. And while that's in the freezer, you want to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 165 degrees uh, Celsius. <laughs> so forgot there. Okay, and so we're gonna do that. And when we come back, we'll bake them off. So now our shortbread is nice and cold, so we're ready to bake them. Everyone's oven is a little different. I'm gonna say about 20 minutes. So what you want is the shortbread to be set and then around the edges it's a golden brown, a lighter brown in the center. Now, um, sometimes they do puff up. I find that. So what I do usually about halfway through baking is I'll, I'll just take like a fork and then just press a little in the center like two or three, well, twice. And then that way they'll go down. Uh, so that you'll have a cavity to put the cream. So uh, about 20 minutes, nice and golden brown around the edges and set. Okay. So 
our shortbread tarts are done. So put your pan on a wire rack. As you can see, golden brown around the edges and centers are just a light brown. As you can see, I did have to prick the center. I put two <laughs> to get them down. So now what we want to do, the, we don't want to take them out of the pan right away because the shortbread's quite fragile. So I'm going to let them cool. And then when we come back, we'll take them out of the pan and then we'll try one. Okay, so my shortbread have cooled down. So I'm using like a silicone, uh, this offset spatula. And then what I do is just kind of twist, it kind of twirls <laughs> like that and comes right up. And see? Okay. So I'm going to let my pan cool down and then I will make the rest of my shortbread tarts. But so now I have my filling and as you can see here it has firmed up nicely and I have some berries for the top. Blueberries are my favorite. So uh, to put the um, cream into the tart shells I'm just using two spoons or but if you want you can get a piping bag with just a plain tip and you can just pipe especially if you're doing a lot but I'm just going to this is typically how I do it. Sometimes what I do is I just have the tart shells like this and I have the cream and the berry, different berries and I let people fill their own. So that way they can put as much or as little as they want. Like that and then like I said they're very good just like that. But my favorite is berries. I like raspberries and blueberries, strawberries, blackberries. <laughs> You can put one in the center or lots, like so. Whatever you want. I'm going to have this one easier to eat. Mm. Oh. I've been making these a long time. And you know what? I still love them. They're just a family favorite because you have that shortbread. It's buttery. It's crisp, and then like, remember we put the cornstarch in there, so it's tender, it just kind of melts in your mouth. And then the cream, the no big cheesecake filling. You, with the cream cheese, you get a little tang there, and then the, the sweetness of the condensed milk, and then the lemon juice and the vanilla, it's so tasty. And then of course, if you want the fruit on top, which I do recommend, but, and you can fill these, well, you can, like, if you just wanted to make all your shortbread tarts like this, you can keep them for, I don't know, maybe five days at room temperature, or you could freeze them, and then you can fill them. when you, once. I find I like to fill them, you know, say maybe the day that I'm going to serve them, but, you know, you can fill them and then put them into the refrigerator. They are good cold, so try these and until next time i'm stephanie jaworski of joybaking.com